Let's hear from Prasanti. Thank you everyone for having me today. My name is Carrie Horizek, and I am the head of commercial development for Parasanti. I am very excited to be presenting at the iTech Innovators event. To quote our team's favorite movie, Interstellar, we used to look up at the sky and wonder at our place in the stars. Now, we just look down and worry about our place in the dirt. At Parasanti, we like to try to employ this mindset on a daily basis, while building the future of data for those who work the hardest. We like to joke internally that we are tech from a different type of valley. And that tagline organically grew out of the original passion points of our founders that led to the creation of Parasanti. None of us are from Silicon Valley, and we have all worked blue collar jobs. We are veterans and farmers. We have worked outdoors with our hands just as much as in front of a computer. Now these personal experiences provide understanding for the sector of society with jobs like these and gives us an advantage when it comes to designing products for extreme environments, which is why we are so excited to be talking to you today about opportunities in space. In fact, both of our founders discovered their original passion for the integration of data science and edge computing through their work with NASA. Before founding Parasanti, Josh began his technical career as a network computer engineer at Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, while James worked for many years as the chief data scientist on the NASA account for Hewlett Packard. Over the course of his career, Josh has successfully exited four startups, preparing him to found Parasanti and bring his vision for edge computing in a ruggedized environment to life. And the result? Our team has developed cutting edge computing solutions for some of the most rugged environments on earth. Through the Parasanti solution, soldiers in forward operating, no bandwidth environments can be in constant communication with their headquarters through a stream of biometric data, pictures of their environment, including potential hostiles and vehicle diagnostics. Headquarters can in turn ingest and process these data through global machine learning algorithms to haptically notify the same detachment of critical insights, such as the presence of enemy combatants in the area. Parasanti's foreign object detection capability being deployed for the U.S. Air Force, can ingest data from cloud data sources, sensors, and wide-range radar and LIDAR detection to predict foreign debris objects on an airfield. In the commercial landscape, Parasanti Edge technology can be used to track the health of individual animals in large herds across massive ranch operations. In advanced manufacturing environments, we can provide preventive and predictive maintenance analytics. And in clean tech, we are working to enhance grid resiliency by utilizing predictive analytics to monitor and shut down machinery and capacitors before they overheat. Founded within the DoD, Parasanti has fielded solutions across a broad swath of warfighting domains to include multi-domain operation projects and land operations with the USO SOCOM, as well as solutions for the Department of the Navy. We are conservatively projecting our end-of-year DoD revenue at $15 million. However, defense is just the beginning. Data architecture solutions, which operate through ruggedized hardware at the edge, represent the future of data analytics and real-time decision-making. Proudly, we are fully bootstrapped to date within our DoD business. Currently, we are splitting our company into two separate entities, which will bring our edge technology solutions to a diverse array of commercial applications. We are pursuing a Series A raise against the commercial wing of our company this August. In addition to strategic partnerships and organic commercial applications, we are exploring opportunities in infrastructure, transportation, and manufacturing. We also have a strong play in the future of farm management and smart agriculture, as well as the booming clean tech energy market. Now, our business model is built on a diverse revenue format of strategic partnerships with AI and ML shops, subscription sales in the industry and ag tech space, B2B custom builds across the DoD, the commercial landscape, and sell with opportunities. So what exactly is it that we do? The Parasanti solution is a full data orchestration platform, which operates both within the cloud and independently at the extreme edge, providing insights when you need them, where you need them. Parasanti's value proposition is its unique ability to ingest, filter, contextualize, and process nearly any type of data through AI and ML algorithms to deliver actionable insights in a disconnected environment. Parasanti's rugged edge supercomputer processes data within the device and sends only enriched data back to the cloud, providing significant savings on both cloud storage and data transmission. Parasanti's advantage is our open architecture approach. The orchestration platform allows integration with nearly any data source available. 
Furthermore, our software was constructed with NSA-level security standards built in. We offer full data provenance, lineage, and pedigree right there at the edge to allow for replayability, essentially giving insight to where, when, and why something happened. Our goal is to provide a data orchestration platform which can amalgamate and process heavy data streams, whether they're from IoT devices operating at the edge in zero bandwidth environments or in a data center in the cloud. Parasanti's heavy lifting supercomputer weighs in at only five and a half pounds and can sit in a factory, attached to a vehicle, or even be carried into space. It delivers 31 Terra operations per second. It is IP67 environmentally sealed and operates on 512 CUDA cores. It processes 12 1080p cameras at 60 frames per second, bringing in an enormous amount of compute to the extreme edge. Our GPU-driven data orchestration platform, Parasanti Nightfall, is designed to host extremely heavy ML workloads. With 800 different data connectors, Nightfall can connect to virtually any type of data stream. And finally, we are the most energy efficient edge computing device on the market, currently clocking in at half a watt per Terra operation. Our proprietary Nightfall software, which is built on a strong, no-code, low-code infrastructure in a disconnected edge architecture, makes our offering extremely hard to imitate. And while the edge computing space is a relatively crowded field for such a nascent industry, Parasanti is unique in its offering. Our primary competitor in the public space is Palantir. We also have several niche competitors across agriculture, industry, and energy, including Farmer's Edge, Blue Force, and Clearblade. The majority of our would-be competitors, however, offer niche solutions which specialize in specific clients and industries or overly focus on the data visualization component. As a protocol agnostic data orchestration platform, Parasanti provides the backbone to edge compute for numerous AI and ML applications. Our founders have envisioned space as the final frontier to really prove out our solution. Space is a fundamentally different type of operating environment. Performance constraints change rapidly and dramatically. In addition to extreme cold and heat, radiation is a constant challenge. Power is finite and hardware is often a long way away from the original power supply. Maintenance is complicated by sheer physical distance and or lack of device specific technical know-how from the astronaut team engaging with the tech. In other words, to operate effectively in space, solutions must be able to withstand extreme temperature shifts and radiation exposure, operate for a long time on low or self-renewing power, and have the ability to fix themselves. And that's why we invented Space Ghost, a ruggedized supercomputer retrofitted with hardware specifically designed to withstand the extreme environment of space, powered by one of the most secure high compute data orchestration softwares on the planet, Spaced Ghost brings all of the bells and whistles of our earthbound solution to a hardware upgrade designed to excel within the unique operating environment of space. The hardware has no moving parts, conduction cooling, error correcting memory, and is encased in heat sink metal plates to withstand the impact of EMI. Our software has been layered with a full DevSecOps approach, enabling the device to shut off in the presence of extreme heat, turn back on when conditions are more favorable, and even to fix itself. If a line of code fails, the hardware can change it and retry. We have also partnered with a leading edge battery developer, Direct Kinetic Solutions, to fit the device with an isotope-enabled battery, which acts as a mini nuclear reactor to the device charging. Envision a next-generation telescope enabled with our Space Ghost technology. The device is processing deep space imagery as it is captured in real time by external cameras. Mid-flight, the probe is exposed to a solar flare, and suddenly it's 300 degrees hotter than it was five minutes ago. Now, normally such an event would cause the system to overheat and the technology to fail. Through our development operations process, Space Ghost will preemptively turn off the device and turn it back on when we are within the correct operating environment. In addition, the AI and ML capabilities encased within the device would enable the operator to change the analytic mission mid-flight should a new research approach be needed after launch. Now, we anticipate a bright future for our company moving forward on Earth, but we know that space is the final frontier. Our primary barrier to entry is lack of a strong partner who can help us develop a working prototype for the Space Ghost program. Which brings us to our ask. We feel a partnership with NASA would accelerate the Space Ghost product while greatly enhancing our data orchestration capabilities, specifically by giving us support to enhance the metal coverings of Space Ghost to withstand cosmic radiation and allow us to test the full capabilities of the isotope battery. Enabling NASA missions with Space Ghost could allow the agency to push the boundaries of space exploration. 
self-powered, self-correcting, ruggedized AI enables us to treat space exploration differently by pushing the boundaries of current capabilities in deep space. AI can boldly go where no man or woman has gone before. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Prasanti. Uh, do we have any questions? Chandra, go ahead. Hi. So I have some, I have two questions. Yeah. Um, the first one is on the, um, the chip shortage. So I'm wondering how you're planning to meet those needs. Um, when it looks like that's going to go into 2000, like, I think 22 um, or later. Uh, the other is that you mentioned that your AI and ML um, was contracted out, what you're wanting to do MSA level um, projects. So are you looking at bringing that in house to meet those requirements? Two fabulous questions. I'll take a stab at both. And then if my founder has any follow ups, please go right ahead, James. Um, so just to sort of first answer the chip shortage question, we actually have mm -hmm. a a, a pretty good long-term deal with NVIDIA. Um, we actually utilize their Jetson kit platform uh, as opposed to the raw chips. And the good news about that type of relationship is that NVIDIA actually has a, a pretty good supply for the kits in particular. It's a much deeper supply chain than the pure chips. We actually are in the process right now of forecasting out the full amount uh, of product that we would be able to withstand due to the chip shortage. But talking to some of our, our other frenemies, as we like to say in the marketplace, we're actually sitting in a, a better position uh, than many of our other competitors simply because of the relationships that we have developed to date. We are also in the process right now of looking at a couple of other supply chain manufacturers to basically enable us to further shore up any potential chip shortage issues that could come through in the fore. James, do you want to add on to that before I jump to the next question? Yeah, and, yeah. and just to kind of talk about that a little further, we do have a distributed supply chain as well. We rely on multiple suppliers of those chips. Um, so we're pretty well set. The NVIDIA chipset that we leverage is very popular and, and very well produced at this point. So are you saying you're relying on NVIDIA for your for your chips? NVIDIA is the manufacturer of the chips, but our, our supply chain also includes companies like Aero, um, companies like Tyrex that, that help us source them as well. So uh, we, ha we have quite a bit of options as far as the, the chips are concerned. Perfect. And then to jump, uh, Chandra, to your AI and ML question. Uh, so basically the way that it works right now within our defense contracts is we have several different partnerships with AI and ML shops to build out proprietary algorithms for specific contracts that we have with SOCOM, the US Air Force, et cetera. Once we finish those projects, we own the IP uh, on those algorithms, essentially, that have been built out by, by those AI and ML shops. And we then have the ability to take those solutions and commercialize them. That's essentially the relationship that we have at the moment. Um, so as of right now, we are primarily doing the AI and ML work through partnerships because our primary value in the marketplace is that GPU-driven data orchestration platform. However, we are being extremely strategic in the way that we develop and build out IP to be able to keep that revenue in-house. James, do you have anything to add on that? Yeah, and as far as the NSA level security parts of it, right, our devices are fully encrypted end-to-end -end, um, and everything is built into containers on our device, right? So no matter what sort of algorithm that our partners decide to leverage, right, or, or, or build into the device, um, it's all going to have that level of security when it comes to deployment. Okay, thank you. Great, um, Alex, you have a question? Yeah, actually, I have two. You know, th thanks for that great presentation and congratulations, guys, on your on your traction in the market so far. So that's actually my first question: is you mentioned that you're looking at I think fifteen million dollars of revenue this year, which is fantastic for the stage that that you're in. Uh, is that all coming from DoD contracts, or are, 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 is any of that coming from commercial contracts? Yeah, so right now we have 6 million in the books locked as of today and a projected 15 million by the end of the year based off of our end stage pipeline as it stands right now. Uh, the majority of it is coming from the DOD side of the business through several different phases. We have actually just closed 
our first two pieces of commercial business, which we unfortunately can't disclose on this call as it has not been announced yet, but we have done our, our primary entry into the commercial landscape uh, for a couple of partnerships there. But yes, from a, from a closed business perspective, the majority is it, that we will count this year in revenue is on the DOD side. That, that's awesome. And I, I guess my second question is you, you said that you're raising um, money, uh, you're kind of splitting the company, you're raising against the commercial half of the company. Uh, so, you know, typically early stage companies are encouraged to focus and it seems here like you're going in two different directions. Can you, can you talk a little bit about, you know, how you think about that and maybe why that's not a problem here, or do, like, do, do you have an advantage that, you know, just, it just doesn't matter that you're, you know, maybe I'd love to hear a little more about that. Absolutely. So we definitely understand why that why that question gets asked. Actually, for us, it makes perfect sense because so much of our work on the DOD side of the business has been within the Defense Innovation Unit. And when you really look at that sort of side of the government space, their ultimate goal is to essentially be able to build those cross pollination technologies for small businesses. We participate in the cyber uh, platform as well. Um, and their ultimate goal is to basically help small technological businesses like us develop innovations within the DOD with full intent to commercialize. Now, what we are essentially trying not to do is, is kind of go in and jump into an industry on the commercial side that we don't have a lot of knowledge in, right? So that's why we've actually done an extensive amount of market analytics to figure out which specific commercial verticals would make the most sense for us to enter into first for our series A raise and then others that we are interested in, but we would not necessarily enter into a series B or C to make sure that we are being very hyper focused and strategic in how we expand. But all of the work that we are currently doing within the DOD is, is meant to build upon and expand our commercial applications. James, anything you'd like to add to that? No, Terry, I think that was perfect. That's, that's exactly. And that was I was gonna ask this uh, during tomorrow's session, but it might be helpful for everyone to hear. Uh, the your just a, a little bit about your your low and no code software development platform. I'd love to hear you know who, who is that aimed at and what level of technical expertise do they need to be proficient in that? Sure. So James, I'll give a short answer and then let you kind of deep dive in on the tech. Um, I will just say that that the Nightfall platform is incredible. It was really founded by one of the the best development software engineers on the planet, who is our our founder, and that's not just hyping them up. It's it's definitely true. Um, the reason that we basically put the Nightfall platform into a low code or no code environment is to enable easier user interface across a variety of technological capabilities. Um, and what we are essentially doing right now is basically finalizing out that front end control panel, um, as well as a full set of training materials so that we essentially would have a direct SaaS model that uh, folks that don't necessarily have a full engineering background would still be able to utilize the platform, but the full power of the technological capabilities of the software are still there. James, would you like to add in? Yeah, so yeah. In, inside the video, you saw a little bit of, of Nightfall and it is purely drag and drop, right? So, so just about anybody could learn how to use it. Um, but the focus of it on the initial onset wasn't necessarily user friendliness, right? It was robustness and the ability to, to connect to over 800 different um, IoT type connectors and, and the ability to leverage GPUs for workloads and all those different types of things built into it. And our next focus was really on, on making it extremely easy to use for a, for a larger commercial user base. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Alex. Um, Greg, do you have a couple questions? Well, yes, I do. A uh, very, very interesting presentation. Thank you for uh, you know sharing the innovation and the great work your company's doing. I was trying to ascertain the potential kind of the uh, uh, non-military small sat or drone capability of this product. What's its size and weight? It was hard to tell from the uh, picture. It's this big. Yeah. This is a so, really so, perfect type. <laughs> so we, about, do, about we do have. We have we do have multiple options, right? Um, our largest one is about five and a half pounds. It's fully IP67 environmentally sealed. Um, we can get significantly lighter um, if compute is less important and the the sealing of it is less important. We can almost get down to a pound, so it can, it can be very light. That sounds like that could be an extremely effective uh, uh, monitoring CubeSat, for example. Absolutely, 
Exactly. I mean, we like to say on the defense side, we're actually at a TRL 8, which is quite frankly, a little bit overkill for most of our commercial applications. So as we begin to go into the commercial space, we are sort of building out basically, like James said, those three different options that would enable us to get the cost down to our customers, but ultimately make sure it's meeting the needs of the market. However, to your point, it also enables us to think very critically about some operating environments that we could go into on the commercial space, like, for example, clean tech energy that do actually require some pretty ruggedized tech, you know, because you're not you're, you might be putting it on a wind turbine, for example, without in the ocean with waves crashing against it. So we have some options in terms of ruggedization uh, versus kind of sort of uh, kind of lower tier models that don't require that level of intensity in the commercial space. I look forward to having some more conversation in the uh, sessions tomorrow. So that's cool. Thank you. All right, and unfortunately, that is all the time that we have for questions. Um, so thank you very much, Parasanti.